Our next speaker is Davy Phillip from Cultivate. Um, Davy currently manages the Community Resilience Programme that developed out of the Community Paradigm Programme in 2010. He was a founding member of FASTA um, and of Sustainable Projects Ireland Limited, the company behind the Eco Village in Clock Jordan. In 2000, he set up the Sustainable Ireland Cooperative with Ben Whelan, which trades as Cultivate. And with Cultivate, he organizes networking and learning events, including the annual Convergence Sustainable Living Festival and the Global Green Area of the Electric Picnic, Ireland's largest music and cultural festival, amongst other things. Thank you, Michael, and uh, thanks everyone. So I'm switching position now from my usual role of facilitator to maybe just sharing uh, some reflections and insights from the work that I've been doing. I really want to highlight two projects uh, that I did in this, uh, this uh, um, energy, what do we call it, climate emergency economy project uh, the GEF has been running. So with, G with Green Foundation Ireland, uh, I did uh, two processes that led to context papers. This one on a question of scale, which was really about imagining a cooperative, a community-led approach to regional resilience, to local resilience. How do we cope in our local places uh, with these cascades that, as John says, we're not going to fix, we're going to have to to learn to live with uh, many times. So we, we explored old ideas like the commons and cooperatives, uh, we've got a rich tradition of cooperatives in this uh, country, mostly still sort of focused on agriculture with creameries and marts. But people like Plunkett and A. A. Russell, when they were going to run the country, uh, the principles of coming together, uh, the Plunkett Foundation in the UK have taken this much further now with energy co-ops, community ownership, community-owned pubs, community-owned shops. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, there that I think can help us reduce our demand but also increase our resilience. I'm always cautious when we hear uh, that our big challenge is emissions demand, uh, reduction, where really we need to rethink a lot of things that we do uh, that sustains us. Um, the, the process uh, brought together a number of people that contribute to, to these papers. And then we continued uh, last year with food sovereignty, local resilience and climate action taking the same approach. How do citizens engage in this? How do we come together as communities and local places and really put in place the things that will help sustain us, but also um, help us reduce our emissions, our energy reduction? At the heart of a lot of this, and we've heard a lot about degrowth uh, today, uh, I was mentioned there that I was involved with FASTA, still I'm involved, not as much now, but many of you will fondly remember Richard Douthwaite, uh, who passed away 12, 13 years ago now. But to over 25 years ago, he wrote The Growth Illusion, and many of us were informed by that. Richard also, with FASTA, brought over Herman Daly uh, and other ecological economists that really informed Kate Rayworth's work that's been mentioned here. And it's so important, that work now, it gives us that common framework to understand, as Orla said, this ecological ceiling or the thresholds that the Stockholm Resilience Centre of identified that we cannot afford to cross, we can't afford to overshoot, but at the same time building this uh, social foundation or social floor where we can uh, meet everyone's needs. So I think there's new frameworks that we introduce here in, in this paper that are becoming uh, more important in thinking about how we move towards uh, a well-being economy, if you like. And with FASTA, recently I was involved in setting up the Wellbeing Economy Alliance. These are uh, hubs all over the world now that are really looking at how do we um, inquire into what the proper function of the economy is, and not right now as we see that we are society and the environment in service of the economy and market. How do we turn that around and ensure that the economy is acting in service of society and the protection and regeneration of our ecosystems. So I think there's, there's a, a lot there that um, the well-being economy, I think, can sometimes be a healthier frame than degrowth, which says what we don't want. But what do we do? What do we want? And one of the projects, the Wellbeing Economy All Ireland Hub has Peter Doran in Queens, it has the Derry Playhouse, is really starting to look at what we need a new ecological social imaginary. How do we imagine what good living is, what the economy is, what a well-being economy might be. 
And so we're starting a project that's just being funded by Carnegie UK to really employ the power of the artists, the creatives, to help us imagine what this is, to lead social dialogue and new social imaginaries that may help us be clear on what is good living? What are we aiming at? Because right now I think we're floundering around a lot. At the core of this is a worldview shift. It's a, a shift in the way we're thinking, not the reductionist way that we've been educated and cultured into thinking where we break it through the parts, but starting to see systemically or an ecological worldview where we see relationships and connections. And I think that's at the heart of the principles of cooperatives, collaboration, connections, mutual aid, self-help coming together. And we're going to need these ideas, ideas like the commons, uh, new cooperatives, platform cooperatives, new ideas of ownership, new ways to engage uh, society in exploring what this economy is for and how do we get there. So I just wanted to introduce that as a, a way to still the conversation. Thanks, Michael.